Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Comic Source Comic Boom collaboration. Time for War for Earth 3 Spotlight. We are up to part four. Uh, I don't want to say mercifully up to part four, but there's only one more part after this. And, and this one kind of similar to last week with the Flash. It Yes, it ties in, but we don't actually spend any time on Earth 3. This is two, this is two issues in a row of this story. War for Earth 3 where we've spent not one panel on Earth-3. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it's okay. I, I like the implications of what this, uh, you know, kind of sets up for the last issue. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's also still a Teen Titans Academy issue. And the, the problems that, that, that have uh, prevented Teen Titans Academy from really resonating with me still exist. That may not be the case for everybody, but... Yeah, there's still some structural issues for me with, with Teen Titans Academy. Those are still here, even though it ties into War for Earth 3. So ultimately, this is this is okay. Uh, it's okay as a setup issue for the finale. Uh, I am wondering how satisfying the, the wrap-up can be in War for Earth 3 number 2 special, because there's still a lot to be resolved. We haven't actually spent that much time on Earth 3 since, like, part 2. So I don't know. What did you think, Rocky? Yeah, I, I I was disappointed in this. I, I really was. Although you, the writing was kind of maybe on the wall last issue with, with part three taking place in The Flash because uh, as much as I love Jeremy Adams' uh, story in terms of the Wally West aspect of the story with his family and the kids, Jay and Irie, the fact is is that it wasn't it didn't really feel like a war for Earth 3. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like it was moving the plot all that much forward. It was just, you know, it was Johnny Quick from Earth 3 sent by Amanda Waller to uh, obtain the uh, the cosmic, the I don't know, the, the treadmill. Thank you, the cosmic treadmill. So, so that not not much happened here, and and unfortunately in this issue, same thing. It just uh, this issue was was very short too, just involving sort of a you know suicide, you know Suicide Squad coming over to uh, recruit. You know, uh, Rick Flag, Suicide Squad, Rick Flag wanting to ask for help from the Teen Titans, and and that that's it. Just I mean, that could have been done almost with like a couple of pages or one panel in 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 a in the main story proper. So I was a little disappointed uh, with this, but uh, and I just want to let me just make one little B I T C H. We we you know on the cover B we have Red X on cover B along with along with Dane. Somebody, neither character having anything to do with this, with the content of this issue. I know it's a pet. Well, not only. Go ahead. Yeah. Not only do they have nothing to do with the issue or the story, neither one of them even shows up again, even for a single panel. There's not even a cameo or or something. (laughs) Neither one of these characters shows up in the story, in the issue at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's, it's true. Yeah. You want to. Did you want me to that's start not, off, or do you want to, you want to go? Not, or? Yeah, and, uh, well, I, I will say in, in DC's defense, that's not uncommon these days, and yeah. it's not a, a DC-only thing. That, that <laughs> Any number of publishers will do that these days. So, yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Kick it off. What did you think? Uh, you know, give us the lowdown. Well, uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I want to I at least be, be positive about because this is Teen Titans Academy, issue 13, and I want to be fair to writer uh, Tim Sheridan that there was actually some he he continues to move forward with some character work with the, with the class with, with with all the characters you know so you know uh, you know Gorilla Grodd and uh, we we met uh, we meet uh, Cybra here a lot of these characters we don't really know much about uh, we know that uh, we know that uh, uh, Cyborg not Cybra but Cyborg. And Changeling were injured in their battle against Red X at the last issue, and so they're basically they Raven doesn't know how to cure them, but Gorilla Grodd has a theory. And with Gorilla, hold on, Gorilla, Gorilla Greg, Gorilla Greg, Gorilla Grodd's nephew. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Gorilla Greg has a theory, and he works with Star Labs with Cybra, who is who is basically Cybra is sort of like the cyborg of Earth-12, and he lends some cyber, cybernetic circuitry to help sort of cure, to help cure Cyborg, which is, which is good. Uh, and so we get, we, we get some character moments here, but it's, it really feels like a convenient wrap-up. But, you know, at one point, even Raven is talking to, to Starfire, saying that, well, you know, all those, that, those dreams I had and visions I had about 
you know, which we know took place in future state, which, which was the future state. Well, you know, I now know somehow that some of that is not going to happen, but some of it is. And I think some of it that's supposed to happen is Gorilla Greg and Cyber are probably supposed to cure Cyborg or Cyborg and Changeling. And so everything's wrapped up in a nice little neat little bow again, you know, and it's it seems very, very convenient. And I'm kind of glad because I want to I want to kiss that part goodbye. But then there's other things that frustrate me. Uh, in particular, uh, Nightwing comes there with 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 what with Flash and Roy Harper. And I got to I got to say that I, I actually didn't mind some of the dialogue here. I'll give Tim Sheridan some credit. I didn't mind some of the dialogue with, with between Wally West, Roy Harper and, and Nightwing. And, uh, you know, at one point, Roy Harper even says about Red X, I thought he was dead. And everybody sort of looks at him like kind of like the joke is Roy Harper. Everyone thought Roy Harper was dead. And so there's some there are some moments here that, you know, you know, it's clear that Tim Sheridan is sort of alluding back and that he does have a sense of humor. So I want to give him some props for that because I, I, I did enjoy some of those moments here. On the other hand, I did get frustrated where I mean, look, Cyborg and Changeling are practically almost killed by Red X and he still won't say Red X's name. I mean. This this really I know it's it just it just annoys me that no one how they can have these conversations they all clearly know who Red X is but the only people that are clued out it appears to be us the readers you know and when I say Red X I don't mean brick I mean the actual Red X the Red X that literally raised and trained brick and then killed him last issue nonsensically I I just anyways I'm so my my frustration with that Red X storyline still exists. And, and then just suddenly sort of as an afterthought, you know, because they had, because the Teen Titans tower was destroyed, they're, they're now in sort of an alternate tower of some kind, you know, you know, Roy Harper jokes that, well, don't worry, we're safe here. Red X, Red X is still loose, but he can't break in here. Now we've, we've really armed up security. And then the next scene as a nice inside joke as, as Rick flag along with the suicide t- team consisting of Captain Boomerang, Bloodsport, Mirror Master, and the Harley Quinn from Earth 8, who, I never caught her name in this issue. I think, I don't think her name was even given. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't even 100% sure it was Harley Quinn. Well, I don't, I don't know. know who else, yeah. I don't know who else it could be. Yeah, is it? But, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I'm a, I never I caught a name, though. Like, I never caught a name. Yeah, I mean. I, I didn't either, and I don't remember seeing her on Rick Flagg's Suicide Squad previously, so I yeah. I was going to ask you is that hard? Is that hard yeah. to quit? I'm not even sure. And, and the thing is, where did where did he get her? I mean, I we we this is this is definitely new. I, I would think because I know I know Amanda Wall Amanda Waller showed up in the in the first and second chapters of War for Earth Three. She showed up on Earth Three with a whole bunch of new members from various places in the multiverse. And we weren't really privy to her building that. So that was kind of a revelation. We never really saw that organically build. And now suddenly Rick Flagg has a new blonde on his team that looks like Harley. And it, it actually makes me wonder if, to joke, if Rick Flagg has a Harley fetish. Because of all, of all the players that he could get on his team, he goes to, the, he goes to Earth 8 and he gets somebody that looks like a, practically a clone of Harley Quinn. I think Rick Flagg's got a Harley thing going on there. And this is his way of, you know, dealing with it. But, you know, that's a... I thought that was maybe kind of funny. I, I much prefer. I much prefer. I'm glad Ambush Bug isn't around. Let's put it that way. I think we had enough of Ambush Bug, uh, but of course he's usually in Suicide Squad. But in any event, um, really, not a heck. You know, there's more character moments here that Tim Sheridan is using the opportunity here, uh, rather than th- this doesn't feel you were you were right before when you alluded, when you stated that this this doesn't really necessarily build up the plot any plot points regarding war for earth three it we learn really nothing nothing advances that main narrative these are just character moments between wally and wallace and uh you know harley from earth eight goes and bugs Tubi, and and they're looking for a speedster and and then at the end this is all drama for the sake of drama this is what's so disappointing about this you know you know uh, uh roy harper confronts uh, Bloodsport and Mirror Master going through the weapons room and they're stealing weapons. And what baffles me about that is, you know, in, in the cafeteria, Rick Flagg ends up talking to Flash and basically says, we're here to ask for your help. Well, if you're there to ask for their help and you got a noble cause and they end up agreeing anyway, 
what was the point of breaking in in the first place other yeah, than to sort of I waste see. all those pages? Like, it just, yeah. the whole thing just seemed like sort of a way to sort of decompress the story unnecessarily and add an, un, an, an unnecessary chapter to this. Of all the things that I would have liked, I would have liked to have seen more of the recruitment drive on very small earths for, for Rick Flagg than the, for Rick Flagg's Suicide Squad, then, then maybe this... I, this felt like a fill-in issue, but I will say this: if we we do get some good character moments here with the Teen Titans Academy, and there's some decent character moments between Wally West and and Roy Harper and Nightwing, and that I didn't mind, um, but it's not quite as satisfying as when Tom Taylor does it. But you know, it, it's it's there, and at the end, it it does seem. I don't know. I have no desire for t for Teen Titans Academy students to be on Earth three. So at the end. Finally, finally, Nightwing makes a good decision in Starfire, and they say, "Look, we're going to go to Earth Three to help Rick Flag and the Suicide Squad take out Amanda Waller. We're going to do that, but no, kids, you're not coming with us. You're not experienced enough. You're staying here." Finally, somebody with ex exercising some good intelligence, but of course, it's for naught because naturally, of course, uh, it never occurs to them that the you know that the students are going to sneak aboard the. Uh, the 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 jet that or the 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 vehicle that they're using to travel to Earth three so that's really how it ends that the kids sneak aboard and uh, on the T jet and they're all going to end up fighting on Earth three and how this is going to wrap up in one issue more I don't think it's going to I think it's um, I think there's I I think it's more likely that this is just sort of a build up adding another layer to what might be resolved in Dark Crisis maybe. But I just can't see this wrapping up ne next issue. I'm having a hard time imagining how it will. But uh, what do you think? Well, yeah, based on DC's recent track record of not ending stories when you expect them to end, uh, you're probably right. It's probably not going to wrap up next issue. And uh, we'll talk about that more in the, the main spotlight, uh, sp specifically with Detective Comics. But yeah, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I, in looking closer as you were talking, I, that's got to be Harley Quinn. She's wearing diamond red uh, shaped uh, red diamond shaped earrings. Like they hang down and they're shaped like a diamond. So it's got, that's gotta be Harley. Um, certainly looks like her. So, yeah, I mean, again, I, I think the, the problem with teen Titans Academy that I've had throughout has been, it, it, it doesn't, it's not focused enough. It's trying to be the book that satisfies fans of, of tight of teen Titans now Titans, you know, cause they're, cause they're grown up at this point. They're no longer teens. So if you want to read about Nightwing and Starfire and Cyborg and Changeling or Beast Boy or whatever name he's going by now, you got to read Teen Titans Academy. But it's not focused on them. It's not telling their story. They just show up once in a while. And, yeah, we get some character moments once in a while. If you ha happen to be a fan of some of these young kids or things like, um, you know, Deadly Class or uh, Gotham Academy and you want to read about some students who are going to school and having those high school interactions or junior high interactions and learning about their powers and coming of age stories. Well, yeah, you get some of that here, but not not a whole lot. Of so, yeah. and then on top of that, you got Red X, the Red X story. So there's no, there's not really room to focus on one storyline or another. And then on top of it, in this issue, we got Rick Flag breaking in. We got the uh, you know preview for the final issue of because that that's the best you can say about this. How it ties into War for Earth Three. This is a preview of the final issue because it doesn't really advance that plot like you said so i think the the problems i have with teen titans academy structurally it's kind of the problem i had with teen titans academy in future state which was tim sheridan has got these huge ideas and they're really interesting but it's almost like he has too many ideas the scope of the story is too big for two issues of a future state series and it's too big for you know a 20 page monthly comic if you're going to have three different <laughs> concurrent storylines going on and on top of that we had two issues with gorilla greg where they went out on this camping trip and that was sort of focused on the young um parts of of you know the story the the sort of the the um the students of uh, teen titans academy and that felt focused and that felt good and if that's what the book was going to be moving forward that would have been great but then it it reverted back so it's like you almost need to split this book into two and if you want to be telling the stories about Nightwing and Titans, whatever, then have a Titans title. And if you want to tell the story about Teen Titans Academy, tell a story about Teen Titans Academy. I think you're asking too much, especially Tim Sheridan. You know, he, he comes from animation. 
it's a lot easier to tell stories in animation because the real estate is so much bigger, you know, 90 minute cartoon or whatever with m actual movement and music and voices to convey, you know, different emotion and that sort of thing. Comics is a, di a different animal. So I'm not saying that Tim Sheridan can't be a good comic book writer or that he isn't a good comic book writer, but it's, it's too much material trying to be stuffed in here. And I think important parts of the story are ending up on the cutting room floor and it has to be so quickly paced. We don't get a chance to really care about these characters. You know, like if you just look at the second page of this issue where Donna Troy is teaching a, a class, there's all these students sitting at some desks and she's asking if anybody has seen Stitch, right? So it tells me that she's in there, she's teaching a class, what class? We don't know. Who are some of these students? We don't know. What are their interactions? We don't know. What are their challenges and their, what's their story? Like, I might be interested in that, but there's no room for that. There's no room to show us any interactions or character moments in class, you know, funny little jokes, you know, just the typical teenage drama that happens in a high school setting. There's no room for any of that. And that's where this, you know, when you tell me this is a Teen Titans Academy book, that's sort of what my expectation is. And I'm going to get, uh, you know, a lot of interaction. It's going to be, this is going to be a book about a school and it's not, it, it's a book that happens to take place in a school with all these other moving parts going uh, along. And, and that's where I struggle. And then on top of that, like I said, you shoehorn in war for earth three on this one, like Rocky said, what, why did they break in? Well, I, if they were, if Rick flag was just going to walk right up and say, Hey, we need your help. It, you know, doesn't really make sense unless they're not being on the up and up, but they appear to be. And then as far as the fallout from the Red X thing, I mean, we've gone kind of on and on about, and we expected it right from the beginning, right? First issue, we said, they're going to drag this Red X mystery on way too long. And sure enough, they had. And then we finally thought we were getting the answers last issue. And they just, oh, wait, just kidding. There's three Red Xs. It's just <laughs> ridiculous. But on top of that, I mean, yeah, it's just really ridiculous. But on top of that, we're uh, reminded about one of the aspects of future state Titans that I liked the least, which was this idea of combining um, Beast Boy and Cyborg together. So Beast Boy's consciousness or personality or, you know, life force, whatever you want to call it, is contained within Cyborg. Yeah, I thought that was terrible. What a diminishing of both characters. These characters are inter interesting enough on their own. It's not interesting to mash them together in any way, shape, or form, but that's the implication here, right? Gorilla Greg's idea to save both of them is to somehow mash them together, and that's what Raven is is alluding to when she says, "Yeah, you know, some of the visions that I had that they survive, you know, are are accurate, and you know, I, I can tell which ones are and which ones aren't." And um, yeah, the idea of mashing them together, I I, I dislike it immensely I, I think that's a that's a terrible thing to do to these characters like th these are beloved characters you know when the new 52 started cyborg was a um a founding member of the justice league yeah and now you're gonna mash them together with gar i mean their personalities are completely different yeah uh, and w was were you the only one that was confused like i was confused i didn't know cyborg was i didn't know they were accepting students from other earths like cyborg yeah, he shows up out of nowhere they, and, like exactly like, he's just out of nowhere it's just like to... I was like, am I supposed to know who this guy is? And then when <laughs> Gr Gorilla Greg says his name, he says, don't blame Cybra. And you notice Cybra is in bold. And oftentimes they'll do that the first time a character shows up and they say their name. So, oh, it stands out. This guy's name Cybra. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So, yeah, it is somebody new. And then, yeah, they mentioned later that, you know, he's from Earth 12. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, again, but if it was focused on the fact that it's an academy and its students maybe would have had time to get that in before now. It could easily could have been something that got cut from a script yeah. previously because there wasn't enough room. And we, we're we not even mentioning the fact there wasn't enough room for the Shazam story that he wanted to tell with Dane. <laughs> and we had to get a four-issue Shazam limited series. So, yeah, in my mind, this book never should have had anything but one or two panels here or there of – of the regular Titans. It always should have been focused on the students. If that's the story that you want to tell and the red X thing, we could have completely done without, or you could have, you know, as much as I'm complaining, they've stretched it out too long. You could have 
stretch it out longer and, and not and by that I mean you could have built up to it so we could have gotten more of the clues and more of understanding of what's going on there instead of having it you know shoved down our throat mm. in random issues where you can kind of shoehorn it in yeah. like if you wanted it to be a big thing then build up to it over a couple of years um, but don't mention it constantly because it's not even so much that they've dragged it out it's the fact that they mention it constantly and drag it out that bothers me. Like if you're going to mention it constantly, then resolve it. And if you're not going to mention it and it's just in the background here or there, then I don't mind it so much because it's not being shoved in my face. Yeah. Like, oh, we've got a secret. We've got a mystery. We've got a mystery. That's the part that annoys me. It's the constant. We've got a mystery. So, yeah, I mean, as far as this being a war for Earth 3 issue, it is sort of. Um and great, the Titans are going to go. I mean, you hear Amanda Waller's trying to take over a planet or an Earth. Yeah, the Titans are going to go and try to help out. Yeah, you're right. They did make a, 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 a the right decision to leave the kids behind. But based on all the behavior of the kids so far in Teen Titans Academy, why would you not search the ship when you leave knowing what these kids are like? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, it it it, it doesn't, you know, but, but, but hey, I mean, there's been evidence from this when this series began that the students have just i mean everyone's intellectually everyone's on the equal playing field here the students the stu the students are teachers are are not any more intelligent than the students and uh you know i mean i mean even okay it was played like a joke but even rick flag being able to sneak in there and they're supposed to have all this security and you know, you, you, you think if you're going to have security that could stop Red X from sneaking in, you'd be able to have security that's going to stop Rick Flagg from sneaking in since Red X was the same guy that broke in and then out of Amanda Waller's uh, Suicide Squad complex in an earlier issue of Suicide Squad. In any event, there's just lack of consistency there. You know, and, and maybe we're nitpicking here, but and the thing is, I'm enjoying War for Earth 3 and I'm having a little bit of fun with this. I still kind of find it kind of funny with with them popping by into the head you know headquarters and attacking a, you know basically breaking into a school to ask for help. It is kind of funny. I I really enjoyed the Harley Quinn from Earth uh, eight or twelve. I'm confusing it with uh, Cybra. Yeah, eight. eight, eight he's, she's from eight, he's and Cybra's from, from Earth twelve. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I'm actually I don't mind that. I I kind of like the multiversal nonsense a little bit. You could maybe play with the characters around a little bit. And I didn't mind some of the attempts at char a character work here. This is actually, as much as I've complained about Teen Titans Academy, I actually enjoyed this one because we're at the tail end of Red X. And at least we got some Suicide Squad members in here. We got, finally, we got Nightwing and we're, we're, something, at least something's happened. And at least they're off to, to Earth 3 now so we can get, they're away from Teen Titans Academy. And, and hopefully the, the worst thing that could happen is that Red X pops, pops up in the final chapter of War for Earth 3 and, and saves the day or says some such nonsense. But hopefully we have no Red X in the, common, in the final chapter of Part 5 of War for Earth 3. <laughs> yeah, I think there's two more issues, well, either one or two. Teen Titans yeah. Academy either ends with issue 14 or issue 15. So right. we get a, another one or two issues of Teen Titans Academy. By that time, War for Earth 3, I don't know. the the crossover will be finished. We don't know if the story will actually have an ending or not. Yeah. That remains to be seen. But yeah, I mean, if the fallout or the long lasting uh, consequence of this Teen Titans Academy series is the fact that Cyborg and uh, and Beast Boy are combined into one person, I'm not going to like that. I can't get undone fast enough in my mind. Uh, but as far as th this particular issue, you're right. I mean, there's there is, is some good stuff here. The character moments uh, are great. And if I... If I, I don't ever want to come across as saying like I hate Teen Titans Academy or it shouldn't exist or it's a terrible series or what I'm, my frustration with it is because the potential for it to be good is there. E each of the individual storylines I think has merit and has enough potential to warrant its own series. So that's where my frustration comes. Like I want to read a Teen Titans Academy book about the students, but I I want to read a Titans book also about you know Night. Wing and Starfire and Raven and right. Cyborg and Donna Troy, like that that dynamic, you know, Wally West, Roy Harper's back. I mean, you could do a whole arc on the kind of the consequences and emotion and what have you of Roy Harper coming back, focused on the adult members of this series. But it needs to be in its own book. So my frustration comes from the, the structure and the decisions to jam all this together 
and it, you're wasting the potential of each of these ideas, which is pretty good. The Red X idea, it might be a good one as well and warrant its own series. It's just not one that I personally would care about. Yeah. Uh, but you could make an argument that that would warrant its own as well. So, yeah, no, no slight to Tim Sheridan, no slight to uh, any of the, the creators involved. It's just this just hasn't worked because I feel like they're trying to tell too much story and there's just not the room for it. And for all I know, Tim Sheridan is very frustrated and, and realizes this as well. I mean, I have no idea. I haven't talked to him about it. So uh, we should also mention the, the rest of the creative team. I don't think I gave that when we started. So Tom Derenick handles the uh, the line work. We have Pete Pantazis doing the colors from pages 1 to 14. And then Matt Herms does 15 through 22. And Rob Lee is on uh, the letters. And it, I did enjoy the storytelling by Derenick. It's very, very good. The color work despite there being two color artists, I, I, I didn't even notice. I thought the color work was very consistent. It's very bright and primary. So it definitely feels classic. And of course we have that, um, the main cover, which is part of a, a, a what do you call it? A, 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 it's, it's not a triptych cause that's three, but basically a five part cover, a connecting cover that that's yeah. five parts, a, a quintic, I guess you'd say. Quintic I guess, five, yeah. Right? But it, uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it would probably look pretty good to have all the comic books side by side. You know, once the series ends, it might look might look pretty cool to have all the covers. Yeah, and you can find that image online of all the covers. And, and in fact, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see it there. It doesn't have the orange background, but that's basically what it looks like when when they're all put together. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, this wasn't a terrible issue. It wasn't groundbreaking. Um, and yeah, it tangentially involved in. Uh, uh, the War for Three, but we we did have the question. So how I think it was when we did the first chapter. I think you asked it, Rocky. Like so, we don't even know at this point how the Teen Titans become involved. So at least that question's answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it. I'm really curious to see how this ends. You know, I'm I'm I, I wish it was longer because I love Earth Three. I love the Crime Syndicate, and it's going to be uh, you know, and Amanda Waller. I know you love to hate Amanda Waller, and. Uh, so, I mean, it, yeah, lots of writing on the f final chapters of this War for Earth 3. Yeah, a lot of Amanda Waller this week. Between this, uh, you know, she's not actually in it, but, you know, plenty of fallout of her choices. Yeah. She is in Task Force Z this uh, this week. So, uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Don't forget to go check out our uh, Trial of the Amazon Spotlight as well with uh, the next chapter of that. cross. And then we have the regular DC Spotlight. Don't think Rocky's going to be able to join me for that one, but uh, it'll still be up. And you'll be able to check out the other titles that are out this week because there's a lot of good ones. So yeah. uh, that's going to do it. Thanks for the support and for checking us out as always. We'll talk to you next time. See you later.